Welcome back guys to some more Cradle. Uh, when we last left it, we were on a hunt for a battery. Which is apparently in the 10th pavilion, so let's go over there. The illness in those kids wasn't accidental. Before getting sick, there was something special about them, some kind of useful quality. This quality allegedly gave them an intellectual advantage over grown-ups. All right, here we are. Number 10. I see you. What, the, what, what is this? A little quicker. A little quicker. Boy, I sure hope I don't have to throw any blocks. Oh look, I have to throw blocks. Well, that sure was hard work. But we came out with it with a prize. Yeah! Alright, let's install this bad boy. I found out what special quality those kids had. They had exceptionally developed visual perception. Visual and aesthetic. For them, the shape, color, and the like surrounding objects was of critical importance. Some things were beautiful in their eyes, others the definition of ugly. And here's the kicker. They were always in consensus. But it was that very ability that ultimately became their plight. The particulars, however, I still do not know. Did you bring the battery? Here it is. Let's replace it. Go ahead. But you'll need to switch me off first. Okay. Alright. Here come the shakes again. Well, no way around that. Yep. Yeah. Shut me down. See you in a minute. All right, now where do I put this uh, battery dealy thing? Maybe, maybe it goes in there. Let's see. Oh, okay. This. Thing? Yeah, there we go. All right. And power on. Two attacks in one day. I'm breaking records. Congratulations. Thanks. Huh. Well, did you find out anything? Yes. Did you find your number? My number? Oh, no, not yet. But I did learn what the children were treated for. Remember I told you that the shape of objects was important to them? I do. Well, their illness was called morphophobia. Fear of a shape. Or to be more precise, an aversion to it. What kind of shape? The human body. They couldn't stand the sight of a human body. That was their disease. What do you mean that they couldn't stand it? They would literally get sick, vomiting at the sight of any person. Their teachers, doctors, passers-by, their own parents, even seeing each other in the mirror. What did they dislike so much about the human body? We never did find the answer. The children weren't able to articulate their feelings. First of all, they were really young. And secondly, they were unable to communicate at all with anyone. Any attempt at communication caused suffering and psychogenic vomiting. 
What an unusual disease. Yes, which is why the treatment was likewise unusual. Now I know the purpose behind those strange activities. Playing with cubes, collecting parts, and so on. So why were they assembling an in-body on stage? To cultivate in the children a positive association with the sight of a human body. They were using those bits to independently assemble the fairy tale character, a positive character. And thanks to their efforts, a young woman would take the stage, the defender of beauty, protecting a blossoming garden from a wicked witch. The witch symbolized ugliness? Evidently. Beauty would triumph over ugliness, and the children rejoiced at their involvement in bringing about a happy end. Bit by bit, their repulsion toward the human body was thus dislodged from their psyches, replaced by a new mindset, which filled the human body with beauty and goodness. But what about the stupid cubes? I see. And the cubes? What was their purpose? The cubes have an extremely simple shape. Playing in the pavilions blunted the kids' excessive sensitivity. Their psyches were being simplified so as to start sewing in them trivial categories. Good and evil, beauty and ugliness. Because their perception developed in an anomalous manner, the kids saw the world of shapes very differently, in a way that grown-ups could never understand. And there was no other way to save their lives other than to... make them simpler. I'm still having trouble understanding. Hold on. Hold on. Meyer. Hennebish. My name is Ida Meyer. You remembered? I found a journal. It contains my data. Here. Ida Meyer, age 26, City of Geneva. My personal number. And a date. August 15th, 2058. What year is it, by the way? 76. Whoa. So, I'm a psychologist from Geneva, and I've been lying in Mongolian soil for 18 years. In a candy box. And not in soil, but in sand. Very well, in sand. And now I'm in a flower vase, trying to verify my number. Only... Damn it. What? It's not working. The network interface. I can't get online. I guess the vase doesn't integrate with the web. Anibish, there's another network terminal, underneath the TV. It's functional, only without power. If you can power it up, I'll be able to get online. Really? Huh. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Help me understand something. What? Uh, let's do this. How did the kids react to seeing a mechanical body? The same way as an organic one. They puked. <laughs> But then, how did they interact with the staff? With puke. Their bouts of morphophobia oh. were suppressed. The complex was equipped with these emitters. I don't know how they worked, but exposure to them enabled the kids to communicate with the staff as well as among themselves. Got it. Put the batteries in the box under the awning. Okay. Box under the awning. Awning. Um, let's see. I guess this is an awning, right? Oh, I guess that's uh, that makes sense, right? Got wires and such. That must be it. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's try that. There's a battery for you. Yeah. And I think I saw one over here. Yoink. And one more. It goes in here somewhere. Ah, oh, there we go. Here we go. Alright, alright, that was it. Now what do we got? Solar battery on the... Okay, solar! I got that! I got this! Wait, on the roof? Oh, okay, alright. Up, 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 up! Okay, I'm gonna stick this over 
Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Oop. Yep. Yep. What? Ah, yes, the remote switch. Yes, yes. On the terminal. Yes. Uh, this seems like a switch. That might not be it. Okay. And um, where'd the remote switch be? Wait. 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 No, I don't see it. Wait, wait, what? Oh! Aha! Aha! Ah! What? What? Wait, maybe it's for. The reason is both Yay. simple and evident. Simultaneous existence of two copies of the same person gives rise to problems we are not prepared to tackle, as clearly demonstrated by the sorrowful experience of the recent past. For now, strict prohibition on duplication and forced deactivation of existing duplicates remain the only solution to the situation. Deactivated neurocopies are retired into secure storage facilities for likely reactivation in the future when a legitimate solution is found. This is one of the cases when... What the... Oh, That sucks. Ida, our terminal burned down. I know, but I managed to check the number in time. You did? So what's the news? Are you going home? The news is bad. I no longer have originals right. There's nowhere for me to go. Well, that sucks. Why? I was restored. Three years ago, Ida Meyer was confirmed dead and restored from a reserve neurocopy. She currently lives somewhere in Geneva. We don't seem to have much luck. How did she die? It says here, died in a despair toxin emission in 2058. This means you are now a duplicate? Correct. My very existence is illegal. Well, don't fret. We'll improvise. Improvise? Sure. We'll find you a normal body with legs. With legs? And then what? Then? Then we'll live our lives, selling flowers. And it is. Listen, when my battery runs out... I want you to put my flowers into secure warranty. I mean, into a glass cell, yes? That is a secure evacuation. I understand. What? What I mean is, please put my neurochip in a cell which... Enemish. Into a camera of times. Or a camera of dreams. What's with your voice? I don't know. A camera of tides? What are you talking about? I'm malfunctioning somehow. My thoughts are out of order. But I think it's over. You need repairs. I don't need anything, Inibish. I'll be put to sleep soon. Disconnected. And for a long while, I bet. So, you've decided? Yes. That is my decision. So you wake up and go right back to sleep. Got it. More like, wake up, get totally confused, then go back to sleep. What are you confused about? The explosion, for one thing. I haven't a clue how I'm connected to it. You got caught in an emission. That's just bad luck. 
No, Enibish, it's not that simple. I found another mention of my name, here, in the database, in the search history. Somebody was searching for information about me. So what? What's so strange about that? The fact that it was the only query for my name in the entire search history, made 20 minutes before the explosion. Who made the query? A man named Mark. Mark Darren. He's listed as transfer operator. The explosion happened on his shift. There's even a recording of it. And also... What? Going by the recording, there was an equipment breakdown not long before the explosion, at around the same time the query was made. Yes, I want to know what happened there. Why do you even care? Is that really important now? It is to me. Because aside from these fragments of the past, I have more fragments of the past than... I mean... Ida. Hey. It happened again. I'm getting worse. I'll repeat. You need repairs. You need to know the cause of the problem before you can correct it, which I do not. Could it be those processing errors you've mentioned? Which errors? You know, the ones that accumulate over time. Impossible. I've just rebooted myself. They don't accumulate so quickly. Something else is happening here. Your voice is changing. If only it were just the voice. I'm at a loss. The reasons could be many. Could be my synchronizer is on the fritz. I've heard of cases when the neurochip malfunctioned due to a deteriorating link with the DNA. Either that or... My neurocopy is failing. But if that's the case... What then? Nothing. Let's just hope it's the synchronizer. Let's. Then we'll replace it with a new one. Sure. There's a new one here in the small. Distance close. Give me the pavilion number. I'll go and get it. Is... in six rooms soft. Got it. And, um, don't go crazy just yet. Try. Try? Yes. Okay, six rooms soft. Got it. Got it. Alright, six pavilion. Six pavilion. It is... Over... Let's see, that was three. Be up here, right? Yeah. There we go. Um... Should be that one, right? That looks like a number six. That's great. Now how do I get up there? Maybe I could hop over from here somehow. Let's see, it's number four. Take go over, yeah. Uh, oh wait, maybe over, yeah. Yeah, there we go. I'm sure we'll be fine. It, it. Don't look down. Why, why did I look down? Why did I look down? But, oh, don't like that noise. No, no! Alright. Now how do I, uh, let's see. Oh. 
Yay, more blocks, yay! Blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Yay, we got the synthesizer. Alright. This appears to be broken. Sucks. Did you bring it? I did. Hold on while I replace it. Oops, oops. Maybe I should turn you off first. Oh well. Let me put this thing back on here. Alright, it's still good, it's still good. Thoughts still messed up? No. Everything's fine. Doesn't sound like it. Then it helped. For now. We'll see if it lasts. Hmm. How long will your charge last? About two weeks, maybe less. Say, know what I found? The correspondence of that operator, Mark, with one of his colleagues. There are some strange tidbits here. Here, listen to this. Uh, I'm with this answer here. To be honest, it doesn't really interest me. Wait, this is important. It's about your parents. And now I'm interested. What? Your parents. And me as well. Here, listen. It's a work correspondence. They're talking about research into memory transfer between people using telepathy. Telepathy? That's what it says here. They're discussing telepathy and also mention some kind of side effect. They refer to it as MPR zero. The MPR zero effect. What is it? Well, if my understanding is correct, it's a sensation. A strange sensation experienced when one transmits one's memory. And what of it? Mark writes that at one time he was very interested in the matter, studying MPR zero thoroughly after that incident with Ida. That incident? We must have been acquainted. Even though I remember nothing about Mark or any unusual effects, and I cannot imagine what incident he's referring to. And what about my parents? That's here too. He recalls working at a research station before the garden was constructed. There weren't many people around in those days. His circle of contacts was limited to several work colleagues and his Mongolian friends. He writes, it's the family living in a yurt not far from the landing platform. That's your family, isn't it? Sounds like it. Where are your parents now? They died long ago. Why? They could have probably answered many of our questions. Maybe Mark even told them about me. Are you alright? 
Yes, maybe. Maybe he told them. Nah, she's doing that thing again. Ida, is everything fine? Everything fine is an ordinary word. Ah, Just crap. Just a note. Like the weather, chilly or warm, but we were looking for other research. Family records, kind letters, so... What was that just now? More of the same? Yes. Again. Ennebish. What? I don't think I have much time. Please, help me untangle this web with Mark. I want you to look through your parents' things. They may have left behind notes. Journals. Understood. I'll go look for them. Ah, that guy. Again, Tabaha is here. All right, I'm gonna go question Mr. Air Train in the next episode, but I think we'll wrap it up here today. So I'll see you guys later.